I'm Jo, this is Rob, we're at Malt Miller HQ and today we're going to be exploring smash brewing. So before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. Okay Jo, so we quite often see um, smash brewing, uh, I've talked about, what, what actually is it? Okay, so smash brewing is single malt and single hop. Okay, so that's where the acronym comes from, smash. Yeah, smash, okay. absolutely. Smash brew today, what's the benefit or why are we going to be doing a smash brew? Okay, there's a, few, there's a good few reasons. It's the simplicity and it's the education of ingredients. So okay. we can brew a series of beers, all with the same ingredients, but we can vary when we add the hops to the brew, that will make a difference to the flavour. We could also brew a series where we're using a different yeast. So in, that is showing us the different flavour that different yeasts can bring. Yeah. And we can also then change up the recipe so that we use the same malt but a different hop. And it starts to teach us about what flavours those individual ingredients bring to the final product that you're drinking. OK, I'm new to all grain brewing. Is this just for beginners? It's not just for beginners. It's a really good way that anyone through their brewing hobby can learn about new flavours, what they bring, and subtle adjustments within a recipe can make such a large difference. What about the yeast side of things? Do we, st we stick to one yeast, but can that then change where we're going with the flavours within the brew? Yeah, definitely. We can change a, we can change a beer from being a, an English ESB to a Belgian golden ale just by swapping out the yeast. So yes, uh, yeast can be a massive part of the, of the experimentation. I'm new to brewing. This is gonna be one of my first um, all grain brews. What equipment am I gonna to need to be able to start my journey? Okay, check out our back catalogue of uh, videos because we've got loads that explain brewing right from the very beginning. The bare minimum required is a stainless steel pot and a bag for the grain so you can separate the grain from the liquor and that can sit on your stovetop and you can do it at home. Now I'm really confident that even if you've never brewed before, watching this video you would be able to produce an all grain beer even if you've never fermented anything before. This is how easy it is. We've got the, the equipment, what are we going to brew today? Well it's your beer, we can brew absolutely whatever you like. So what do you like to drink? Um, I like to drink uh, pale ale. Okay. There's hundreds of pale ales and they range from like right the whole spectrum. So we need to dial it in a little bit more if we're going to create our own recipe. Do you like a strong malty pale ale or something a little bit weaker on the malt side? Where are you on the, on the mouthfeel and body of the beer? Because that will be what that will determine what malt we're going to use. So where are you on that? Actually, somewhere in the middle, a, a nice balance of, uh, I want the malt flavour to be able to come through, yep. but I also want to be able to, to get the hops as well and something that is quite fresh, a little bit zingy. Okay. Um, so something that really is quite well balanced. It isn't really malty, it's not really hoppy. It's a nice drinkable pale ale that's got a zingy hop that comes in. Okay, so you want some assertiveness from the hops. Yes. And you also note, uh, mentioned citrus there as well, a citrus note in, from yeah. the hops. So to produce a nice balanced beer, we can use Marisotta. It's the variety of the malt. That will give a good malt character, yeah. but it won't be too dark. Okay. So it's just used on its own. And we can use citra hops at various different stages during the boil and with dry hop as well. Right. So they're not going to... It's not going to be a massive hop bomb that's going to smash you over the face with the hops. This is going to be a balanced beer, so we just need to judge where we're going to use those citrus hops during the, during the brewing process. What other ingredients do we need to consider uh, within this recipe? Okay, well, a, a massive factor is the yeast. So you've said that you want a, a balanced beer. The yeast choice can really, really help with that. So we're going to use the London ESB yeast. Now, that's a really rounded yeast. It, it will slightly dull the hop flavour, so we need to think about that with the design of the recipe, mm -hmm. but it will produce a nice, balanced beer with good yeast character. OK, is that yeast a dry yeast, a wet yeast, or what kind of yeast are we... There's various iterations of that yeast, but actually today we're going to use the Lallemand, the dry yeast from Lallemand. We can just sprinkle it in when the uh, temperature's right of the work. 
We've talked through the equipment that we're going to need for today's brew. We've designed a recipe that is within the balanced flavours that I like. Should we get brewing? Let's get cracking. We've doughed in and we've set the pump to circulate the mash. Rob, can you talk us through the best recipe that we're doing here, please? Sure. We've got five kilos of raw minced marisotta. Yeah. And in total, we're going to be using 100 grams of citra hops. We're going to be using them at various stages during the boil and indeed for dry hop as well. There's various areas to be considered when you're designing a recipe. Now, some of those are what alcohol percentage you're going to want to end up with in the beer. Okay. So that relates to how much malt you're using right. within the brew. We need to know how bitter we would like it, and we'd like to know the colour. So the colour is measured in what we call EBC, that's a colour rating. And the bitterness is IBU, so that's International Bittering Unit. So that tells us how bitter the beer is going to be. So with this beer, we are aiming for about 30 IBUs. Right. And we're going for about 8 EBC on the colour. So it's going to be on the slightly darker side of a, of a pale ale. We're also going to be aiming for a beer that finishes, it gives us about 4.3% alcohol. So that's quite a balanced recipe. It's going to give us a beer where we can taste everything that's going on, the malt and the hops. Um, the hops will be relatively assertive, but they're not going to take over from the bready maltiness of, of the beer. We've been mashing for an hour. Yeah. We've been recirculating during that time as well. The mash period is now at an end. So what we need to do is we need to get the bag of grain out of here and put it into this truck. Okay. Because the grain, grain's going to go and what's left behind, we're going to boil with the hops. Right, no. Let's get cracking. Okay. Let's take that off there. Blim. Right, so this is heavy. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. So if I grab it, I'm going to want to just let it drain for a second. I'm just going to pop that into the trug. I'm going to leave this here. It's going to take a little while for this, the remaining wort in here, to come up to the boil. So whilst that's coming up to the boil, this bag's going to carry on draining. So just before it comes up to the boil, I will empty the contents of the trug into the boil kettle. We've reached our boil point, so now is the time to add our first lot of hops. So this is 10 grams of citra. We're now going to set a timer. Hey Siri, set a 60 minute timer. We're now at a really important part of the brewing process where we need to start talking about sanitising anything and everything that the wort comes into contact with. After the boil point, obviously before the boil point we don't have to worry about it too much because everything's boiling, boiling. so it's yeah. sanitised itself. But as soon as that boil comes off, as soon as we turn the boil off, anything that the wort touches after that point has got to be clean and sanitised. We've got 20 litres of boiling liquid here. Yeah. What are the safety considerations we need to think about before we start doing the next process or during the next process? Yeah, well, actually, it's really, this is a really valid point and it really needs thinking about from a personal safety point of view. So just think about the clothes that you've got on. We're going to be transferring really hot liquids. So, you know, I'm not brewing in sandals. You know, I've got, I've got some decent shoes on. Uh, there's quite a lot of times when you're going to get workplaces, so just be very, very careful with your hands. The steam coming off it, that's yeah. really hot, but also it can have unexpected consequences. So we've got a work chiller here. Yeah. All right. If that has any liquid left in it from the previous, as soon as I put that into the kettle, that 
the water in there is going to be squirting out and it's going to be squirting out at like boiling temperature. So that's the sort of thing that we really need to be really need to be aware of and thinking of whilst we're in this last process of the brew. Okay, I've just been handed a pot of stuff. Rob, <laughs> what have we got here? Okay, there's two things in there and they need to be added 10 minutes before the end of the boil. So one of them is a product called Protoflock or it's a kettle finings, also known as Irish moss. So what that does is it helps clear the beer. It makes the smaller particles of protein grab together so they become bigger particles which helps them drop to the bottom of the kettle right, and okay. as soon as we put that in we will be able to see the proteins grabbing grabbing together okay the other item that's in there yeah. is yeast nutrient the work contains nutrients for the yeast to chew and grow we want to enhance that we want to give the yeast the best opportunity to convert our were into alcohol and CO2. Um, to do that, let's give it some nutrients, give it the best chance possible of doing that in a really successful way. Okay, so we're we gonna put this in now? Yeah, we're gonna put that in now. So let's get our immersion chiller in. Now we'll remember to point it away from ourselves. So if anything does come out, it's not gonna get us. That just sits in there like that, so it's nicely sanitizing. We're also gonna turn our pump on to sanitize the pump. So here we go. We've chilled the work down to about 20 degrees and we are now ready to drop it into our fermentation bucket. What do we need to consider here, Rob? Okay, well, as we said previously, we need to definitely make sure that our fermenter is brilliantly clean and sanitised, including the tap. So the tap's been taken apart, cleaned, sanitised, put back in. It's the only stage during the brewing process where we want to have oxygen in the work because the yeast needs oxygen within the work to do its job. So we're gonna drop it at a height and that will help oxygenate the work as it falls into the fermenter. We've got 20 litres of our smash pale ale in the fermenter. What did we learn along the way? How did we think we did? I think we did really well, actually. Um... You got wet feet at one point. Only a little bit, but that was your fault. Yeah, okay, yeah. it was, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah no, I, it's been really good. It's been a great experience from my perspective. Um, Learned about the Smash Brew, single malt, single hops. We've incorporated some, some good process. I've learned a lot about how we go about it, getting things up to boiling point, the sanitization of products as we go through the whole process. Um, and we've now got it in our fermenting bucket, ready to... Have you started? Yeah, for sure. Um, just one thing I want to go back to there. So I did make a mistake in this brew, actually, which made it a little bit difficult for us. So do you want to talk about your mistake? I can do. I left the hop filter on. So one thing that I've always said is if you're going to use pellet hops, don't use a hop filter because it's going to get blocked up. So what did you do? I left the hop filter in. <laughs> and guess what? It blocked. It blocked. Yeah. So the transfer from the kettle to the fermenter really took a little bit longer than it should have done. And it would have been much easier if we hadn't used hop filter at all, just relied on the whirlpool and done that. So that's my lesson that I've learned today. Again, as we've said, every day is a school day. So just getting back to the fermentation of this, yep. we are gonna ferment, ferment in this bucket. Yep. We're gonna put a heat band around it and we're gonna put it on a heat pad as well because it's quite uh, cold in here. Uh, freezing. Um, <laughs> So hopefully this is going to ferment at about 20 degrees, 10 days, two weeks, and then we'll be packaging. So we've had a really successful brew, and we've actually overshot our numbers that we were aiming for. So we were aiming for a, a starting gravity of 1043. We've actually ended up with a starting gravity of 1054. Now that gives us two choices. We can either use a calculator that's on our website uh, to know how much to dilute, so we can add some bottled water into the wort and dilute it back down so that it's, the starting gravity is correct. Or we can say, not worried about it actually, and we're gonna drink it a little bit stronger than it was. Not, which, not which such is a actually, bad thing. Which yeah. is actually what we're gonna do, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you've learned a lot today about doing a smash brew. I certainly have learned a huge amount about the brewing process, the cleaning process, um, and everything that's gone into it. We've had a lot of fun. Hope you can enjoy doing a brew similar to us at some point using the same method. We've got loads of content on uh, YouTube, on our YouTube channel and more content being delivered the whole time. So if you like it, please subscribe. 
And you can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter.